Aloha, I'm Yenji Denise. Welcome to Get Your House in Order, where we help you take care of the things that matter most. In this series, we cover a wide range of topics from health and wellness to financial readiness and preparing for every phase of life. Today, we're focusing on something that so many of us love, travel. But thanks to the pandemic, for a lot of us, it has been a while. We begin today with Paulette Ito, Senior Vice President at Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. And Paulette, when we talk about preparing for every phase of life, we're talking about the good parts too, like taking a trip. Absolutely. Traveling can be so much fun, you know, especially if you do it with family, you engage everyone, reconnect. It's absolutely fantastic to do. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about Get Your House in Order and how travel intersects with that. Well, when you do travel, you have to get prepared. You plan your trip, you have to get everything organized for your trip and then take your trip. But sometimes you need to understand that there's other things underlying that you have to prepare for, such as trip insurance, where you're going to travel, if it's a foreign country, do you have to change currency? There's so many things that are involved in traveling and one should be prepared for that. Tell us about Get Your House in Order and the campaign being run by the credit union. Yes, so Get Your House in Order is a life planning initiative that we have because everyone needs to get their house in order because sometimes life just doesn't go the way that you think it's gonna go, right? And get your house in order helps you prepare for that. It's not just financial wellness, but it's physical wellness, spiritual wellness, and mental wellness. Yeah, and tell us about the resources that you have. We have the Ho'o Kelly Guidebook. Absolutely, I'm so excited to say that we have our second issue out. We have four versions that will be coming out and we have version one and two out. It's available at our website at hificu.com and we encourage everyone to come to our website to download it. And tell us what in the guidebook when I've looked at this uh, document, it's kind of like a roadmap. It is a roadmap. It's, we divided it on purpose in four phases of the past, the present, the future, and miscellaneous. We came up with the past, that was version 1.1. 1.2 is the present, and we'll have the future and miscellaneous. But the current um, guidebook that is out now is things that you have, it's a little bit more intense, it's about your insurance, it's about your accounts, your bank accounts, your all your financial information. So it's quite intense and we encourage everyone to fill that out. Right, and when you say everyone, you know, who is this really targeted toward? If you're breathing, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> we want every human to do it. Um, seriously though, anyone from their mid-20s on, but if you have a child, I say you start a book for them so that you can start their journey. Okay, wonderful. And where do we learn more? HiFiCU.com. Okay, thank you so much, Paulette. Coming up, we're going to meet a travel agent based here in Hawaii who shares his best tips on how to explore the world. And spoiler alert, what you do before you leave can make all the difference. First up, though, let's meet someone whose experience shows us why preparing ahead is oh so important. Aloha, my name is Sherry Tom Sherrill. I'm from Mililani. This is my story. So travel is really important to me because of the way that it expands my horizons and lets me connect with people from around the world. One trip that I did that was really memorable was visiting Finland, uh, specifically going to Lapland to chase after the Northern Lights. What was really amazing about that trip was actually finding out that I have family in Helsinki that runs a restaurant that sells Hawaii food called Hokus of Helsinki. But you know what I value about travel is doing research to learn about the different foods, the different customs, and to try out the different customs. So one of the things that I really enjoyed was trying the sauna, the saunas, um, because what Finns do is they go into the sauna, get really hot, then they run outside um, and jump into the water, whether it's the Baltic Sea or whether it's a swimming pool, and you swim around, and you go back into the sauna, and you do that four times. And I just love experiences like that because it's out of the norm of what I normally do in my daily life. And it's, you know, another thing that's really amazing is meeting people from other places and then being connected with them through social media afterwards. So, you know, a friend that I made on the trip actually came to Hawaii afterwards and I got to be her host in, in Oahu, on Oahu. And, you know, I think we're lifelong friends. And, for me, wherever you go, 
that's the value is experiencing the culture, trying different things, trying the different foods and meeting people. So whether you're doing your own research and traveling on your own or you're going through a travel group uh, under the guidance of a, a tour leader, I think travel is really important because it expands our worlds and it gives us experiences and memories that just enrich our lives. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. Welcome back. Joining us now is Derek Ka of Air and Sea Travel Center. Welcome and thanks so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. You know, we talked earlier with Paulette about how some of us are a little out of practice when it comes to travel because so many of us stayed home for about two years. How do you suggest taking that first trip post-pandemic now? Well, um, well, first thing is I think, um, what, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? That's the main thing. Yeah. So, don't worry about where and when, just go anytime you like. Yeah, and how do you choose the right destination? Well, same thing, go back to my um, first question, same thing. In your mind, where do you want to go? That's the first thing that comes into your mind and go for it. Are there certain places that are better for a certain type of traveler and how do you best figure that out? Um, well, if you want to break it down to like, um, you know, um, different groups, let's say hikers, they go for hiking groups, younger one, for school kids, they might go for like um, Disney Park and places like that. So choose that kind of itinerary or, you know, for parent. But uh, mostly um, uh, senior people, <clears throat> so it's good for them to go on a um, regular tour. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us about the differences, the pros and cons of traveling on your own versus traveling in a group. While traveling on your own, they will have to do a lot of research and take a lot more and do a lot of homework, take along the homework, and then during the trips, they take on it so that they don't have to redo everything, all right? Then um, they have the free time to, you know, free choices of hotel, food, and everywhere they like to go. And only drawback is they don't know the place well, only from the book. But versus when you go on a tour, yes, um, limitation is flexibility is not there but you get the rest they do all the job they do all the research we don't have a thing no need and we just go and do it mm -hmm. and then of course with the guidance from the leader or the tour managers they will give you the in and out and they will tell you where to go yeah. and you have the free time too yeah, so it's kind of a mix, right? That you get sort of the, the, the guidance of the tour, but mm -hmm. you do have some free time and, you know, to explore and do things on your own. You do. Yeah, yeah nowadays, um, tour packaging uh, changing a little bit. Um, pre and post pandemic, we are giving a little bit more time, like let's say uh, one city, one day free time for them to roam around. Of course, we brief them well. And then so that they know what they want, where to go, where to find, and where to get it. What are you finding in your own customer in terms of where folks want to go? Not necessarily a specific place, but the kind of trip people want to take now, especially after being home for so long. Mm -hmm. These moments of getting to explore the world, they feel even more precious than they did before. Yes. It's, I think there is a rush right now. But as far as uh, where they are going, it depends. Um, in our minds, we like to go to Japan because being in Hawaii, we are. Um, influenced by Japan, Japanese culture and Korean culture and the Asian culture, let's put it like that. So we love to go back, but flights are not readily available right now. So there's not too many to go on. And plus there's a lot of obstacles. Like when you go to Japan, you gotta fill up some my SOS, the apps thing. For seniors, a little bit hard. Even for the younger generation, it's harder to, it, they find it hard to, cause um, very glitches and things like that. So. In a way, they would find a destination that are a little bit less um, hot, I guess. You know, so like going to Turkey, Morocco. Uh, we start up last December, but we have three. Uh, I myself have three trips going to Turkey, wow. just this past, you know, I mean, nine months or ten months. 
So plus our co-worker, same thing. So plus the niche marketing is uh, to Turkey and Morocco is there's a good buy. In a regular time, there's almost like about five thousand dollars. This is like twenty five hundred to three thousand dollar round trip airfare, including hot air balloon. Right, and you've done all the work, right? That's yeah. kind of nice to not have to read all the Yelp reviews and try to figure out what is the best hotel, what's the best restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never been on a group tour, but there is some appeal to having someone else do all that work for me. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah, the main thing is they understand more because the um, tour guides itself being local. So not from the book. There's a lot of things that happening like daily life. Yeah, when we are questioning him, he told him a question, he would be able to answer it rather than from the book or from the news. Yeah, yeah sometimes. That sounds nice. Okay, we're going to continue our conversation with Derek in just a moment. Stay with us. You're watching Get Your House in Order. We'll be right back. Choosing a destination. Choosing a destination is the first step in recapturing your spirit of travel. Deciding where to go often depends on age and interests. Pros and cons. Traveling alone allows the freedom of choice but can require significant research, as individual travelers often lack direct knowledge of locations. Traveling with a tour group lacks some flexibility of choice, but most tour group leaders have direct knowledge of locations. Tour groups also allow for free time to explore destinations. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with their local favorites, accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. Welcome back. We are speaking today about travel. We've covered the basics on trying to figure out where to go, but let's talk about next steps and actually what happens when you're on that trip. There's a lot of preparation. Of course, Get Your House in Order is all about being prepared. What do you recommend when it comes to staying organized on a trip, especially when you're talking about these group tours? These are multi-destinations, so you're packing up and unpacking several times in the course of a, of a week or so. How do you stay organized on a trip? Well, um, well, two things, I guess, uh, if they are individual traveler going on their own, they can find information like Googles and things like that, you know? So, and then if they are on a group tour, um, I think most of the agency, they will give them a booklet. The booklet cover everything regarding what they need, what they should wear according to the season. And, you know, there's a packing list. There is also like, um, you know, money matters. It covers the credit card and the cash, how, you know, what is going on right now, and where do you change, exchange your money, and things like that. Uh, that sounds very good, especially getting a packing list. I'd like, mm -hmm. And I kind of think that less is more. Whenever I take a trip, I always find that I overpack. How do you, how do you know to do what's just right? Well, um, I guess um, you pack everything, try to, you know, in the beginning, you do everything first. And then after that, um, you know, the luggage is like too big for the stuff that I have. So you start to reduce from there one third. Maybe I don't need three shirt, maybe one shirt or two shirt or something like that. You know, that's good enough. And when we get it, um, I guess uh, nowadays there's a lot of uh, things, um, clothing that are very uh, light and simple, like drip dry. Yeah. Just wash, rinse and everything like that. The next, you hang it out to dry at night, the next day is dry. Yeah. You mentioned the money matters and I'm interested in exploring that a little bit more. Let's talk about staying safe when you're traveling. What is your best advice on how to make sure you don't get pickpocketed or taken advantage of when you're on a trip? Well, I guess it's the common sense in a way. So we don't show or flash our money on the street. Uh, we flash our money in the shop, in the shop. All right. So and then I try to use credit card more. Um, you don't lose out because you know US dollar is so strong right now. So today is let's say Japanese yen is 150. Maybe two days later it's 153. So I'm on a win-win situation. Right. I might get a chance for a better rate or transaction. You know, so I, I would do credit card. And it's easier after the pandemic. Most of the places like 7-Eleven and everything like that, even a dollar thing, tap tap tap. That's wow, it. wow. Mm -hmm. And what about preparing your documents? Because you're taking passports, you're taking insurance information, credit cards. Should you make copies of that before you go and store that at home? Or what is your best advice for that? Because sometimes you do lose a passport or you lose a wallet and mm -hmm. then you're in another country and then what? Yep. 
Um, get a passport, don't enlarge it. You know, when you copy or Xerox the passport, exactly the same size, all right? Because um, they want to see the same size. Because in the computer system, it's the same size in you know, Homeland Security. So in case if we lose our passport or something like that, so just go online, fill up the form. Somehow they sense it, I guess there's a location spotter, I guess, so they know it. And when you get to the closest to the embassy, they usually doesn't have uh, appointment. But when you get in line, you go in, they know, oh, Yunji, you're here, welcome. We know, we know, yeah. Oh, well, that's gotta be reassuring. I know that the next question, it's kind of you know, sensitive to wherever it is that you're going, but generally speaking, how do you prepare for the host culture to know the customs and to stay safe, you know, that you're not offending anyone and that you're you know, integrating yourself into that community in the right way? What do you suggest for that? Well, read a little bit more, you know, Google it, research it, and at the same time, I think, um, 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 if you're on a group tour, when you get there, um, the local guy is gonna tell you. He's gonna, you know, get you into the system. What is the culture? What is everything? What should we watch out for? Like, you know, whatever, everything. Usually on the first or two days, they would wash it down. Okay, I'm prepared, I'm ready to go. So much to think about. When we come back, we're gonna talk more about travel insurance, what coverage to get, and how to go about getting it. That's after the break. Staying safe. Staying safe while traveling includes never showing cash in public places and using credit cards as much as possible. Always make and keep an extra copy of your passport when traveling to another country. And remember, cultural sensitivity is important for remaining safe abroad. Windows Hawaii. Trust Windows Hawaii. Welcome back. We're speaking with Derek of Air and Sea Travel. You know, Derek, we referenced travel insurance in the last conversation. Tell us a little bit about what travel insurance covers and why we should go about getting it. Well, travel insurance, there's like two types. One is called a medical, cover the medical portion. But if you want a full coverage, that would cover the trip cancellation, trip interruption, air, medic evacuation, you know, or emergency evacuation and things like that. So right now is a good time to go for it because um, during the pandemic times, a lot of the countries do require to purchase insurance before they can visit the country. So uh, it's a good gesture, uh, but it add on the cost you know, to the tour. But um, at the meantime, let's say if someone um, in between, let's say before departure, they got COVID, tested positive, they cannot go on the trip. The country wouldn't allow them to get on the plane or entry to the country. So in that sense, they can, with an official positive paperwork, you know, they can get, start the process and then they can get the money back, oh. plus the trip cancellation. Right, and let's talk about the other scenario, which is you get to the destination and mm. somehow you catch COVID, maybe on the plane or maybe before you left or maybe when you got there mm. uh, and you're sick, then you can't get that Air, airfare or air, that flight home, um, how would travel insurance help in that scenario? Then maybe you can get hospitalized or does it cover your cost if you have to stay longer? Yes, in this case, um, um, you know, if they have to be quarantined in that country, the cost can, um, will cover with the insurance. Mm. And generally, how much do these policies cost? Well, it depends on the age, plus the cost of the tour. The higher the amount, yeah, the cost is going to go up, of course, you know, with the age too. Right, that yeah. makes sense. And uh, who do you recommend get travel insurance? Right now, I think um, AIG insurance and then Alliance insurance, they are very good. Yeah, the one that we want to get is um, they get to pay out fast. You know, some they drag on insurance agency, they drag on to about half a year to one year. But you know, like Alliance like that, um, travel insurance, they are fast. You set it in about usually two or three weeks, and then they'll get the money in a month. Mm -hmm. Let's circle back to where we started, and that is really the joy of taking a trip. So many of us really missed out on that during the pandemic. Um, in your own life, where do you like to go, and, and why do you like to travel? Well, I love to travel um, you know, with the groups. But of course, by myself, I like it too. But um, 
in a way, I like to bring joy to the group. But some of them have been with us for years. Some of them are newcomers. But when you see a smiling face, who you have, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy, as long as they enjoy. And 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 I think that you know we talked about that pent up demand and people taking more and more vacations. There is something about leaving your home and getting to a new place that really invigorates and awakens you. Tell us about that. Um, I guess um, you know um, after the pandemic, it was like about two or three um, you know years. Uh, they're staying at home for too long. Um, some find that I'm getting less time. I don't know what's going to happen. So let's enjoy it to the fullest. Whenever I can, if I can move around, I go for it. Okay, and if people want to learn more about your organization, where can they find you? Um, they can Google us on Air and Sea Travel, or our office is at, um, you know, Kukui's, uh, Kukui Plaza Mall. Okay. And for those of folks who are just starting to have this conversation, you know, just trying to think about where they want to go, what's your, you know, what do you wish people did as they try to plan these trips to have the best trip possible? What's your best advice before you head out the door? Go with what is in your mind, okay? The first thing that comes in your mind and go for it and see what other places you can find these kind of tours or maybe uh, do your own. Yeah, that's it. What you like, what you need, that's it. Oh, I'm ready to take my trip. Thank you so much, Derek. We learned so much. Remember, you can always find us on YouTube or watch the show again there, or you can listen as a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Yanji Denise. Until next time, take care and aloha.